y'all, it's St. Pam again. Today, I'm going to talk about all of the awesome reveals from Tenocon this year. I am so hyped for all of it, so let's just go on and dive into it. Uh, first up, the Nintendo Switch is getting Warframe. Uh, this is great because the Switch does allow for an easy way to play on the go, uh, which, in my opinion, is just another reason that I need to buy one eventually. Alright, uh, next up, we're getting an unvaulting this summer. We don't know exactly when. I've heard that it's going to be in July, but I'm not going to say that's confirmed. We'll know when we'll get it when DE tells us, basically. Um, it is going to be a good one, though, regardless of when we, when we get it. Uh, this one is going to include Nyx and Rhino. Uh, along with it, you will have the option to buy their accessories separately. This is huge for people who already have them. They can just get the accessories that they may have missed when the Prime access was originally done for them. Um, some deluxe skins were shown off as well. Uh, first off, we have confirmation that the frames can and probably will have multiple deluxe skins in the future. Um, we saw concept art for the next one that Nyx is going to get, which, quite frankly, she really needed it. I don't know of a lot of people who really like her current skin, and I don't think I've even ever seen anyone using it. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's popular. The one that we saw with the concept art, though, is fantastic. I love it. I love how it looks. It's just awesome. Titania also got concept art for her deluxe skin, which I'm super happy to see. It looks really cool. I am curious if the wings are going to disappear if she's not using them or if they'll always be there. And it was just a uh, choice of the artist to take them off for some of the uh, concept art. Either way, I can't wait to see the models for both of these girls. We did get to see the models for Neja, Vauban, and Nidus, which all look great. Uh, even though I was skeptical of Nidus's, his skin has far exceeded my expectations. Uh, the best part is that his design has inspired a new helmet skin. The helmet has only gotten one other, so that's great news. That Dalgo will have a new one coming out that I'm betting is going to be bundled with Nidus, but I'm hoping that you can also get his skin separately. Uh, Vlad was shown again. For those of you that are unaware, he was first shown on the dev stream a few weeks ago. He is an Eidolon themed uh, Warframe appearance wise, and I really hope that we get a quest explaining how that happened. He was also called the Vampire Frame, though my understanding is it's kind of being shifted more to a Revenant Frame because some of his abilities, I think, are having to be changed. We'll just, we'll have to see once he's released. Uh, there isn't a lot of information on her yet, but uh, we got to see the first concept art for Garuda. She is gore-based and deadly looking. Rebecca Ford said that if Valkyrie is Rage, then Garuda is Indifference. Then we got three big reveals. The really big reveals. The first was for Chuna, and I just cannot stop listening to the intro song. It is so good. Howler and I listen to it several times a day. Fortuna is a city that's populated by the Solaris, who serve as indentured servants to Nefania. They are heavily augmented. Most of them do do not even have human heads. I think I saw like one other than a kid that might have, but I'm not even 100% on that. They're heavily augmented. Now, Haller and I find ourselves wondering if they will get their heads back once they pay their debt off. It's an interesting idea. I don't know if that's how it's going to work. But I'm curious. I'm curious why they're so heavily augmented, period, even if even if they don't get their heads back. Alright, the open world on Venus is huge. It is much larger than the Plains of Eidolon. Instead of using Arcwing, we are going to travel with a hoverboard, which is called a cave drive. The thing looks awesome. Can't wait for it. 
Um, there's just so much to cover. Uh, instead of killing animals like we did on the plains, we'll be capturing them for conservation. Uh, we'll be able to see their tracks in the snow and even see their leavings as a way to find them. Uh, we'll have a whistle type thing we can use to attract the animals and we'll tranquilize them and then they'll be taken to uh, be conserved. Uh, we know there's going to be robot fish, but we didn't really see those. We did see the creepy robotic spiders, lots and lots of those. Uh, we saw a giant Neff uh, face to go along with a statue that we saw a little bit later that didn't have a face and had spiders coming out of it. So creepy, very creepy. Uh, there's just, there's so much there. I don't know that I can adequately cover all of it, but those are the things that really stuck with me. Then they transitioned very smoothly while they were still out in this open world. Uh, they transition to a demo of the Rail Jack. Uh, this gives you a squad ship that um, you have complete control of. You or one of your squad mates will guide the ship where you want it to go. It is not on a rail. It's not just automatically going to go there. You drive it, which I guess technically means you could crash it. I wonder if it would explode. Anyway, there are multiple weapons that your team can take control of to shoot at the enemies. Uh, you can control how much power the weapons get. Uh, teammates will have to fight enemies that board your ship, uh, put out fires that are caused by those enemies, um, and you'll have the option to hop on an arc wing to go board their ship and sabotage it so that you can blow it up. So there's so much there. It's awesome. Um, it looks absolutely amazing, and what's even better about this is that the Railjack is an unrealized concept from Dark Sector. At least that's my understanding. I think it's great that, D that DE has finally been able to bring this concept to life. Uh, the last big reveal was a teaser for the next quest. If you have not finished the sacrifice, then you may want to stop listening now. The trailer features Neta in her sentient skin. Her mother was speaking to her and she responded by asking what she should do. Space Grandma wants to reignite the old roar. I imagine the Railjack will be fairly heavily used for this. I don't see how it couldn't be considering they're like floating fortresses and stuff like that. I really think that Railjack is going to be involved in this and it's going to be awesome. Anyway, that's uh, pretty much all I have for now. I've got various links to other places. You can hang out with me below or follow me. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing to see all of my future content. Anyway, thank you all for listening, and I hope you all have a great day.